so we have two cell averages here we have two cell averages over here we want to reconstruct the solution here and the reconstruction cannot be linear so u of i plus one uh, u i plus half left is equal to a nonlinear function has to be equal to a nonlinear function of u i and u i minus one and u of i plus half right has to be a nonlinear function of u i plus one and u i plus two so the question here is how do we achieve that nonlinearity what kind of nonlinearity is it required and through this process, we can also see an aspect of the order barrier theorem, why we need a nonlinear scheme. So let's start to look at several cases, several very uh, representative cases of how we want to reconstruct. So this is U, this is UI, this is ui plus 1 and this is ui plus 2 and this is a case where the solution is very smooth locally the solution increases almost in a linear fashion this is when you represent the if you compute the cell averages of a linear function this is what you what you're gonna get so the in this is case this special case one is ui minus ui minus 1 is equal to ui minus ui plus 1 minus ui is equal to ui plus 2 minus ui plus 1. So this is a special case we are considering. Okay. In this case, second order accuracy means that when we perform a reconstruction of the solution, if we reconstruct the solution of a linear equation. To get second order accuracy, we need an exact reconstruction. Right. So first order accuracy means if we reconstruct a constant function, we should get the exact reconstruction. And second order accuracy means if we reconstruct a linear, linear function. Doing Taylor series analysis, a linear function has the second order derivative, third order derivative, everything else is equal to zero. So if we want a second order accurate reconstruction, we need to have exactly, I want my u at i plus half left or right, both equal to ui plus ui plus 1 over 2. So that's my first case. All right. The second case. is a completely different scenario. This is a scenario where my ui is a local maximum. Okay. When this is a local maximum, can somebody tell me what should the value of ui plus half left what is the constraint on this value can the value be higher than ui itself if we want to preserve monotonicity of the total variation remember the monotonicity of total variation is not creating new extremas. If you create a new extrema, if you push the maximum, if you push the local maximum of the function above ui, which is the current local maximum, we are increasing the total variation. Right? Yes? It should be the value in ui? Yes. So in this case, the reconstructed value should actually be the value of ui. All right. Okay. So here we start to get us we start to get a sense of why the reconstruction cannot be linear. 
because in the first case, in case one, in order to get this value, and in order to represent this value, in order to represent you, I use, use blue to distinguish the two cases. In order to get ui plus r half at left, only as a function of ui and ui minus one. How can we perform that representation? Remember here, interpolation in the linear function is the same as extrapolation, right? So we can use a ui. ui minus half of ui minus ui minus one. Okay, so here let me let me rewrite it a little bit. So if I divide by this by delta x, that's the slope. And if I multiply that by delta x over two, it is saying that I am computing the slope using ui and ui minus one here. And I'm applying the same slope over this range, which is delta x. Uh, I think I, it's plus. Sorry. Right? So, so this is the slope. And delta x over 2 is this range. So the width here is delta x over 2. So this is the slope times the x distance, which gets me this. And if I add that to ui, that's exactly the value at the interface. Does it make sense? So here, we are constructing, reconstructing the solution using ui minus 1. If ui minus 1 increases or decreases, the value here is going to change. While in the other case, when the function is non-smooth, when the function achieves a local extrema, the reconstructive value should not depend on ui plus 1. <coughs> yes, we're trying to reconstruct the value of u at the interfaces, at left and right interfaces, so that we can apply the Godunov scheme to compute the flux at the interface. So once we, uh, we can have u left and u right at the interface, uh, applying what we studied in the last lecture is going to give us a numerical flux. So what we what we have is is the following. In the first case, when the solution is locally smooth, we have u i plus a influence from the next cell. In the other case, when the solution is not smooth, we have just the u i without influence from the last cell. So we we can write that, we can write the second case as plus the same slope delta x times zero, right? And this is like times one, right? So this one or zero is like a turning on and off a slope indicator. That's something we call a limiter, right? So, so it, we can write this as a phi, zero or one, right? And this, this phi is equal to one for smooth solution and zero for local extrema. So how do we construct this phi? So phi is going to be a sensor of whether the solution is locally smooth or, or not. So phi depends on depends on what? The best way to sense whether, whether this is a local extrema or locally smooth is the ratio between this and this. If the ratio, in this case, the ratio is equal to 1, when the ratio is equal to 1, we know it's locally a very linear function. In the other case, the ratio is what? It's negative, 
right? So, so again, depends on the uh, the ratio. Let me call R being ui plus y minus ui divided by by ui minus ui minus y. So again, this is equal to one if R is equal to one. And for local extremes, either minimum or maximum, r is going to be less than zero. Okay. So, so the flux limitus is this phi of r. And let's figure out what are the conditions that this phi of r has to satisfy in order for us to have a second order uh, monotonic scheme. Yes. Which one should be ui minus 1 here? The, the, the first the, the, the term before that. Here? Yeah. Here should be ui because this value is ui, right? Uh, let, me, let me use this uh, black color here. This value is ui, right? And the distance between ui and this appropriate reconstruction <coughs> is delta x over 2 times the slope. Right, so this value is ui plus the slope times delta x over 2. Right? Yes? Um, so for this phi uh, function, like it's not all inclusive, like should it just be r greater than 0 for, for the solution? So you, we have a proposal that should phi of r be greater than 0 for smooth solutions? or just Sorry, phi of r equal to 1 for all r greater than 0? Is that what you are proposing? Yes. Okay, yes. So, so we have a proposal that phi looks like that. Proposal phi as a function of r. So this is 0, this is 1. We have a proposal that is 0 here and 1 here. Okay, we'll take a look at if the proposal works. All right. Okay. So uh, let's figure out the appropriate. Let's uh, first figure out if this part of the proposal works. Yes. In, in the green figure, um, the cell to the left is it equal to ui plus one as well? Because it's the same thing. Oh, so sorry. The the left should be ui minus one. Yeah. So they don't have to. Be they don't have to be equal. Yeah. They they only. Uh, so they only need to be both smaller than ui. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.